Let's do some German verb practice with the verb aufräumen. Well, it means to tidy or clear up. So the image is of moving things around to make them tidy. This is, of course, the infinitive with our standard en ending. And notice that this verb has a prefix. This little word alpha at the start, which is a preposition, means on or onto. And importantly, this is a separable prefix. That means that it's going to detach from the rest of the verb when it's used in the present tense. So when we chop off the en to start with and add our six different persons for our conjugation in the present tense, we're going to split the stem from the prefix and treat them as two verbs, really, the first part of the verb going in second position in the sentence and the second part of the verb, the alf, going at the end of the clause. There are no surprises with the endings. Ich räume auf, I tidy up. Du räumst auf, you tidy up. Er, sie, es räumt auf, he, she, it tidies up. Wir räumen auf, we tidy up. Ihr räumt auf, you plural tidy up. And sie räumen auf, they or you formal tidy up. In the simple past tense, the two parts of the verb will separate again. And so we have er räumte auf. With the auf going to the end of the clause that the verb is in. In the perfect past tense, we have two parts again, but that's what we expect with the perfect past tense because we've got our helping verb, in this case, hat, because it's not inherently a verb of motion or transition. Er hat auf geräumt. The future tense is very normal. Er wird aufräumen. So we just conjugate werden into the correct form and then use the infinitive at the end of the clause with an en and no zu. And one idiom it's good to be aware of is with the use of mit. So if you say mit etwas aufräumen, then it has a much stronger meaning than just aufräumen by itself and a direct object. And really it means to do away with something. So there's a sense of force, even violence, and if it's used with, you know, a population, for example, in a Bevölkerung, mit einer Bevölkerung aufräumen, that would be actually quite forceful and violent to wreak havoc or to, to slaughter or something like that. But it's a more forceful picture of clearing something away. Let's do some conjugation practice with the verb aufräumen. You might like to pause the video and have a go at all of these yourself and then mark yourself when we go through the answers together. Number one, mein Bruder räumt sein Zimmer auf. First thing to notice is that we've got two parts of the verb because it's a separable verb, it's being conjugated in the present tense. So the prefix is going to go right to the end of the clause. We have a T ending on the räumt because our subject is singular and masculine and third person. In other words, it could be replaced by er. And the word sein, don't get confused, it does not mean here to be, rather it means his, my brother tidied up his room. Number two, die Kinder räumen in der Küche auf. The kids are tidying up in the kitchen. We have an en ending here, and that's because our subject is plural. That is, it could be replaced by z, z räumen auf. And again, we've got separation of the stem of the verb from the prefix, which goes right to the end of the clause. Number three, ihr müsst euer Zimmer jetzt aufräumen. 
Now here, the separable verb is not separated. And the reason for that is we have a modal verb, which means that the next verb, whatever it is, is going to be in its infinitive form at the end of the sentence with an en and no tsu. And the infinitive form has those two parts of the verb connected together. This sentence means, you guys have to tidy up your room now. Number four, gestern hat David seine Sachen aufgeräumt. Here's our first past tense form of aufräumen. We have our helping verb there in second position in the sentence. It's hat because the subject is David and the past participle always goes right to the end of the clause. It's a regular verb here. It's a weak verb with a T ending in the past participle. And in the past participle, the GE is going to be stuck between the prefix, the separable prefix, and the rest of the verb, the stem, if you like. This means yesterday David tidied up his things or his stuff. Number five, ich räume auf, wenn ich Zeit habe. I tidy up when I have time. So the first clause in this sentence is the first three words. And I'm just going to put a line to separate it here. A comma indicates in German really the, the start of a new clause. A clause just has a verb and someone in charge of a verb. That's all it needs. And even though the two parts of the verb are right next to each other, they're still going to be separated because the verb is, because the verb is conjugated. It has an E on it. And that means the second part of the verb is going to go all the way to the end of the clause, even though it's right next to the conjugated stem. Number six, es ist wichtig, sein Zimmer ordentlich aufzuräumen. It's important to tidy up one's room properly. Now, the first half of this sentence is an it is clause. It is plus an adjective. It is important. It is interesting. It is cool. It is funny. And then followed by a to. It is important to. And in a to clause, again, we're going to have here a separation between the prefix in a separable verb and the stem, the rest of the verb. And in a to clause, the verb is always going to be in last position in the sentence and in its infinitive form, but this time with a tsu, unlike, of course, modal verbs. And we've got another meaning here for sein. It can not only mean his, it can also mean ones, that is the general word for one, but the possessive adjective. Number seven, entschuldige mich, ich muss aufräumen. Excuse me, I have to tidy up. Again, we have a second clause, which is really very short. And we've got a modal verb, which means that the second verb is going to be sent to the end of the clause, which happens to be right next to it, because there's no other information in that clause in its infinitive form with no zu. Number eight, ich bin gerade dabei, mein Zimmer aufzuräumen. This is our second zu clause example, and this is a really useful phrase. Ich bin gerade dabei. I'm right in the middle of, comma, and then a zu clause after that. And whereas in English we say, I'm in the middle of, plus an ing, I'm in the middle of tidying. In German we have this zu clause after that phrase. Number nine, du brauchst nicht aufzuräumen. Es kommt ja eh alles wieder durcheinander. You don't need to tidy up. It's all going to get mixed up again anyway. This is our third two clause in all of these examples. And this time it's because we've got a brauchen plus a nicht. You don't need to. Usually you can't really use brauchen plus a verb. I need to do something. You would say muss, ich muss etwas machen. But when we have that negative nicht, we can use it. And we need to remember that zu as well. Du brauchst nicht zu fürchten is another common one. You don't need to be afraid. Number 10. Sie drückt sich vor dem Aufräumen. 
she's shirking or dodging the tidying up. Notice in this final example, we have a capital A on the Aufräumen. It's not just a Zul clause, it's not just, there's no modal verb here. We've got a capital A, which means that Aufräumen here has become a noun. It's become nominalized. It's turned from a verb to a noun. And we do the same thing in the English translation, the tidying up. That's a noun, the tidying up. This is a cool phrase, to shirk or dodge something. Don't forget the for before the object of the verb.